Hello, my loves. Welcome or welcome back to Chemistry with Kismet Tarot. I'm Monica, the Kismet Chemist. And in today's reading, we are getting messages from your inner child on ways to connect, ways to engage in more play, and just what it is that you need to know. So as I was getting prepared for this reading, I genuinely only knew prior that the goddess power oracle cards were calling out to being shared with a collective. As I was shuffling and letting them assert themselves and make themselves known for who wanted to come forth with messages, I started getting this very upbeat, lighthearted energy. And this is quite a dramatic change. And the message that I heard was the energy has been heavy. It's time to play. And I don't know about you guys, but I know for me, as an adult, as a parent, as someone with responsibilities, with psychic gifts, and in the state of a changing world that is so rapidly changing in, in chaotic and dramatic and ways that we just, we aren't really sure that we can fathom. And that would be Winifred, who always gets a little excited when I do my readings. But in a world such as the one that we're living in, the energy can get very heavy when you grow and you take on more and more responsibilities, you can forget to have fun. You can forget to laugh. You can forget what it means to have fun, what it is that you enjoy. When you engage in shadow work, these truths, these small pleasures get further and further away. And it can come down to a time in which it feels as though you'll never reconnect with that again. Pisces season has not been an easy one for many of us. As it comes to a close, as we work through the density of the emotions and shed those layers of who we weren't, who we once were, sorry about that, who we once were, and yet not fully stepping into who we are becoming. It is a good time to take pause, to take a deep breath, to engage in self-care, but also to allow ourselves to just have a little bit of fun. Play a song, sing at the top of your lungs, dance around the kitchen, something to have fun, to alleviate all of the heaviness. It won't always go away, but right now, right now is the time to sit down, to hear these messages, to laugh, and then to have some fun. So I'm gonna give you guys just a little bit of time to look over the piles to choose the one that calls out to you and then we will get into the messages. Hello, pile one. If you chose the first pile, you chose the Lemurian Quartz, which 
They say that Lemurian quartz have been essentially implanted into the earth or left behind during the ages of Atlantis and Lemuria. And each one is unique to itself. They have ridged lines in which they say that there is information from that time encoded on that. And we each have our own crystal when you feel called to them that speaks to us, that shares its wisdom, shares its understanding with us. You also are being reached out to by Brigid. It's the card number eight and it says Creative Spark. Brigid is the goddess of in bulk, which is the first, um, it's the first Sabbat of the year. It's the beginning of the lunar year. And she is the goddess who is known for so many things. She's associated with cows, with fertility, but she's, to me, she is the glimmer of hope when winter has gotten too long of the upcoming spring and the hopes of the new things that we can create, the seeds that we can plant to nurture and to tend to and to watch blossom throughout the course of the summer and the fall. And I love her pr expression on this card because it is such a pure joyful happy hopeful expression and that isn't to say that there aren't things in life and and things going on that are heavy and challenging but sometimes it's within those moments that you find your creative spark, that flash of inspiration. It could be hard. It can be very hard to feel inspired during these times, to feel like there is hope left when things have been dashed, I'm seeing an ocean crashing against the shore and it almost sounds like glass shattering. And yet, even in the most turbulent waves, the lighthouse still stays standing and you are the lighthouse. You have forgotten that You've forgotten it is what I keep hearing. But it's time for you to remember that you are the lighthouse. You shine the beacon of light out. That is your creative spark. That light that you have within. That you shine to give people guidance. To give them clarity. To give them a place that feels like home. And that comes in so many different ways. I'm seeing Harry Potter, and for me, when I was young, Harry Potter was my home. I read and reread and reread those books because it wasn't just an escape from the hard truth of my reality when I was a kid. It was a place where there were people who understood what heartache and loss were existed. It was a place where magic and mystery melded together and were possible. It was a place where I felt like I belonged. No one can tell you that you have to create one thing or this thing or that thing. No one can tell you that it is right or wrong to create what it is that you want to create. And sometimes we forget that, especially if you're on a spiritual journey, we can forget that because of the 
misconceptions that some people have. But Brigid wants you to know that it's your creativity. It's your creativity that is the light that shines on other people, that shines out for the collective. So let's, let's get a little bit more information from the tarot cards. I'm just going to set the intention to let the cards speak whatever messages it is that you need right now in this moment. We've got three. We have the Knight of Cups, the Hanged Man, and the Four of Cups. Okay. And on the back of the deck, we have the Two of Wands. Okay. The Two of Wands is speaking really loudly to me, but what I want to talk about first is this Knight of Cups and the Four of Cups, because what I'm seeing here is there's this, this hurry up and wait energy. Oh, let's get that camera situated for you guys. I may need to move. There we go. Okay. There is a... I'm going to say that <laughs> that's kind of clear cut that we're not supposed to talk about that two of wands quite yet. I get this sense of a hurry up and wait energy. And see the Knight of Cups here, his head is surrounded with these blue and white. It's almost like they're little lightning sparks, but they look like um, one of those... One of those balls that you plug in and it has a little lightning. Oh my goodness. Ugh, I can't remember the name of them. <laughs> I actually bought one for my nephew for Christmas this year. And I, it's, I'm just, I'm forgetting what it is. And you like touch it and the little lightning goes on your finger. But that is what it looks like is surrounding his head. And his head is what you would think of as your finger on it. So his head is getting all of this hypercharge energy and it's staring at this cup up in the sky, which is so different than this four of cups where you've got a mermaid who is laying and staring down into the water at cups that have been spilt and there's these air fairies and they're mocking her and she feels so alone and it is like the whole world is turned against her she can't go back to where she was she can't go to where they are because they're not the same and she can only sit there and stare into the depths of the water not knowing what to do and it's like there are two parts of you where you want to look above and you want to keep going but you're so tired and what you really, really need right now is to not focus, to not focus on this. This vision and this idea of a future, of a, this is going to be how the future is. This is what is going to happen in my future. This is what is, it's not about that. Right now it's about waiting, pausing, letting yourself take a breather, letting yourself see who you truly are and change your perspective on what your heart is saying, what your head is saying, what other people are saying and let yourself be led. But it's okay to stop. It's okay to slow down. It's okay to engage in the things that you love and to stop planning and plotting and 
scheming. It's not really scheming because it has such a negative connotation, but it's like if I do this and if I do that and if I do this, then this and this and this will happen. But I have to make sure that I do it this way and this way. There's this high level of your mind is going a mile a minute. Your heart is in a state of sorrow. And spirit and your guides have been trying to come in and say, please slow down, please stop, please rest. Rest, watch. I'm seeing the great mouse detective. That's a, I think that's a Disney movie. Um, some of you may have watched that as children. There may be a message in there for you. I don't know. I think I've seen it once in my life. But I'm seeing a mouse with, with a Sherlock Holmes outfit. But it's, let's, let's take a pause and remember the things that inspired you when you were a kid. The things that made you want to play act as them. The things that made you want to dress up and go on an adventure. Because it's when you do those things that you remember that youthful nature that you have, even if you don't feel youthful, even if it seems so frivolous right now. The most important part of any journey that you're on is when things get hard, when the going gets tough, all of those sayings and platitudes, when that time comes to remember who you were as a kid, to do the things that you did as a kid just so that you can give yourself the chance to take a break, to take a breath, to let those burdens and that weight just fall off. Let's see what the fairies have to say. <laughs> we have the card journey. The card precious time. I'm going to just put this here. And the card hope. Yes, see, just like I was talking about with Brigid's expression, so much hope. So the journey card, when I look at it, I actually get this Alice in Wonderland vibes. You know, there's a bunny and she's in this tiny little fairy. It's this beautiful fairy, but she's looking at her rabbit and it's like it's time to go. And I keep hearing the white rabbit I'm late I'm late for a very important date the only date that you're late for right now the only thing that you need to catch up on is you it's like your your inner child and your guides are saying every moment matters but not every moment is meant to be heavy and focused on what I can do to change the world and what I can do to do this and what I can do to do that. Every moment is precious. And so are you. And so it's time to treat yourself and your time that way. It's okay to stop. It's okay to wait. It's okay to rest. And I am telling you guys 100%, I am terrible at this. I am terrible at this. I have had to actively work very hard at not posting videos as soon as I'm done uploading them, but to stick to my schedule so that I have a chance to take a breather in between instead of feeling like I have all the pressure on me to keep producing that fast. Because when I go into that state, then I don't have enough time for my kids. I don't have enough time for my husband. I don't have enough time for the things that I ju truly, genuinely enjoy in life. And so my time is precious. Your time is precious. Be fully present in the moment. Don't watch the clock. Don't think about what, what happened, what could be, what might be, what where you want to be. Focus on right here in this moment right now because when you do that you open yourself up to the absolute present moment that's where there is hope because it is in the present that we shape the future the past is already in the past 
The future is still uncertain and being shaped by every choice that we make. So if we stop and stay and say, I'm making a choice right here and right now to take care of myself, to love myself, to engage in play in whatever way that looks like for you. You're showing the universe that you know how to balance, that you know how important this experience, the fullness of this experience is for you beyond what you want to do and what you want to accomplish and who, what you want to attain. It's all about what you want to embody. And right now, it's time to take this journey back, back into the things that you loved as a child. Color, sit on the floor and color, get a juice box, you know, get fruit snacks, do something that everyone else as an adult would say that's so childish go do it because it's in that moment that you fully embrace every aspect of who you are and you will feel that sense of hope one more time on this hope card it says hope is always there even if we can't see it optimistic expectations can help change a negative situation into a positive one I have the death card, and this is not death like death and dying. This is death like the death and rebirth. And you guys, you saw this flip out. It is literally hope. Right here again, hope. <laughs> and revelation. When you're looking for that divine spark, for that creative spark, I have Dragon Rider on the back and I'm going to tell you why I giggled at that. When you do that, when you embrace the things that have fallen away but know that still, no matter how many, how many different ways of you fall away, your inner child doesn't ever die, doesn't ever change, doesn't ever go away. Your inner child can heal, but your inner child is this Dragon Rider. It's the one that can do anything. <laughs> can literally, oh, sorry if you could hear that. That was my stomach grumbling, I guess. But I saw the dragon rider as I was shuffling these cards. And that is how I knew that this was going to be a message from your inner child and a message about having fun and playing because it's about imagination. It's about engaging in play it's about knowing that you can close your eyes and sit on top of a dragon and soar above mountains and touch the ocean and do and be anything and everything that you want from the back of this dragon and you can do that simply through using your imagination and when you engage in these activities that that is when you have these revelations and these divine inspirations is what I'm hearing and I feel like you've been looking for that for a very long time and so now is the time for it to come in for you pile ones your inner child seriously wants you to hold on to hope no matter what to hold on to hope, no matter what has happened, no matter what has transpired, because that is the essence of your inner child. That is that is how you know that you are in touch with your inner child, is when you feel that hope and that lightness and that joy. I want to say thank you so much for being here. Thank you to Brigid for bringing these messages forth to your inner child, to your guides, to my guides, to spirit, to the universe. But especially to you, Pile One, thank you so much. I love you all. 
If this resonated, please feel free to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and hit that little notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And I will see you again next time. I love you all. Bye. Hello, pile two. So you chose the second pile, which has the clear quartz crystal. And the goddess that is coming forward to talk to you today is Rhea with flow and it's the card 44 and Rhea is one of she is one in which I have so much respect and love for Rhea was one of the original goddesses she was the wife of Uranus who birthed the Greek gods and there was a prophecy I do believe I could be getting my mythology wrong but there was a prophecy about how one of his sons was going to overthrow him so he ate his children and Rhea hid her son Zeus away to protect him and she also is the original divine mother she's her energy to me is very earth and water together. But her card in this deck talks about being in the divine flow. It's about surrendering oneself to the natural ebbs and flows of life, to the flow of cre creativity, but the flow of emotions is what I feel very firmly some of you may have been really truly fighting against a wave of emotions that have been trying their best to come through trying to be felt be seen be heard be acknowledged and Rhea is coming through right now and she wants you to surrender to it she wants you to flow let the tears flow from your eyes let the emotions flow out of your heart because when you allow this to happen, to come out, to flow, then you step into the flow of your life and your natural cycles, your natural flow. So We're going to get some messages from the tarot. And I'm just going to set the intention for the cards to tell us whatever it is that you need to know. Some of you may have dealt in childhood with being told that it wasn't okay to have your emotions, that your emotions were over-exaggerating or over-the-top too much and then we have the ten of wands that first came out that explains so much it's there's this woman and she is carrying an entire village on her back and there are two messages it's about the way that you view it she's carrying the entire town her home her natural place on her back and it could be such a heavy burden. And that is what the essence of the Ten of Wands card is. But in this one, it's knowing that you are you can be at home within yourself. That it doesn't have to be such a weight to carry around. And if you would allow yourself to open up and feel these emotions, it doesn't make you over the top. It doesn't mean that you are being too emotional or too sensitive or anything emotions when you engage with them when you allow them when you let them pass through you when you give them the recognition and the respect that, that they deserve can teach you so much about yourself about the world about your life and your experiences but also about what it is to feel like you're finally in the flow of life instead of moving against the current. And we have 
the hanged man this came out in pile one so you may or may not be from pile one there may be some messages for you however i will say that i have felt this hanged man energy flying through the collective quite a lot and then on the other side we have the ten of cups that is absolutely incredible and beautiful And they don't want me to use the back of the deck. When you take this pause to feel your emotions, to let them out, to let them flow through you, to really just, just let yourself be. You don't have to do, you just need to be. To be in this steady state of feeling. And however it comes out, you know, my daughter, she had a really hard time getting fully in touch with her emotions and, and allowing herself to cry for a while there. And so she she knew she needed the release and she kept asking, what can I do, mom? What can I do? So I suggested she watch a movie. Um, and sure enough, the movie that she watched, it made her cry. And she felt so much relief from that. When we cry, we are cleansing ourselves. We are purifying our emotional body. We are letting out tears, which are water and salt, both of which are purifying and cleansing agents. It's okay to take this time to do this cleanse, to let these burdens fall off your shoulders. Nobody said that you needed to carry the world on your back. And if somebody did, then maybe you should ask why it is that you believe that you have to carry more than what you are capable of if no one else is. And this could be a different situation for everyone. I do want to make that caveat. But I feel so strongly like it's, it, it's like you had your back against a wall and you're carrying everything for everyone all the time. And all you want to do is feel happy. You want to feel like you're doing something right. And you don't want to stop. You don't want to slow down because if you do that, then everything that's wrong, you're going to see it. So let yourself see it and let yourself cry through it and realize that there's nothing wrong with your emotions. There's nothing wrong with you taking a pause. There's nothing wrong with you saying this is too much for me to bear and I need to stop i need to slow down i need to change i need to wait until i can feel this emotion and move through it so that i can move back into the flow because when you do that you shift yourself into the ten of cups and to me the ten of cups is the essence of emotional fulfillment you can look at it in any way you want it can be emotional it can be relationship it can be family it can be all of these things and you've got all these fish, these school of fish, and there are two mermaids wrapped around each other. But to me, it's about coming into harmony and union within yourself. It's knowing your own worth, knowing the power that you have within you to overcome any and every challenge, and feeling the true happiness within you that is sourced from you not from anybody else but from you did some of you watch little mermaid as a child you may want to watch little mermaid i don't know why it's disney movies right now but there's a lot of disney movies flying through my head um little mermaid and there's something else with fish and no, it's not Finding Nemo. It's older than that. I just can't put my finger on it quite yet. Uh, Fantasia. Some of you watch Fantasia. There's something, there's something that I'm seeing that Fantasia, because of the music and the imagery together, can help you remember what it's like to believe in yourself, to believe in magic, to believe in happiness. <laughs> Look, we have the card purity. 
Always trust in the purity of your heart. Look inside your heart and within it you will find the answers to your questions. What did I say about tears? When you cry those tears, you're literally purifying yourself because that is what they are made to do. They're made to quench, to cleanse, to clear, to purify your emotional body so that you don't have this heavy weight that you're carrying around anymore. What else do we have? We have believe in magic, just like I was saying with Fantasia. Oh my goodness. Open your eyes and see the magic that's all around in nature. The fairy of the northern lights says you are a part of nature, so you are magical too. Did any of you watch the movie Willow? I just, like, when I was reading northern lights, I saw her ears and she's got pointy ears. And I saw Willow with the wand. That may be one. And then we have New Beginnings. And I'm not going to read that one. Um, because they don't want you to get... It's something about... You want this new beginning. You want to birth something. But they said, these need to come first. So please understand that we're showing you what can be. We're showing you what is meant for you. We're showing you what will be if you allow yourself to believe in magic to stop, to feel that flow, to let these emotions out, to let yourself drop the heavy, heavy burdens that you've been carrying to purify your body, your mind, your soul, to just let it fall off and, and cleanse out of you. Because it is in those moments that you will see the magic, but not just the magic in the world, the magic within yourself. And again, I'm being taken back to Fantasia. Ooh. You have some dragon cards. Wow. Okay. All right. These are the dragon wisdom cards. And they actually were my son's. And then he's like, Mom, will you use these? And I said, of course I will. Um... I'm actually going to have to get the book because I don't know this one, but it says Oisin. And then we have Destiny. And then these two feel like they need to be over here to help you understand independence and divine order. So let me grab the book real quick. And we're going to read Oisin. I'm just a little unfamiliar with it. Okay. Oisin, the Dragon King, is a brown tree dragon. He is the oldest and largest dragon. No human may ride him. We must instead kneel before him. If you draw this card, heed the call in your heart. Feel the deep yearning within you. Do not suppress it any longer. This yearning is the call of the king, resounding in each and every cell of your body. And it's, it says to do a meditation and light a white candle. We are all in contact with the source of all being. Fly off on your dragon and divine love will flow from the source of all being through the object you hold aloft and into you. So it essentially, it's this calling of your heart, this divine masculine calling of your heart. And I know I, I felt I felt this resistance as soon as I put the divine order down because you want to break free. That's what the independence is saying. Like we see, we know you want to break free and there is that coming, but you have to make those steps. You have to show yourself that you can break free. Everything happens in divine order and that's so, it's so hard to hold on to when you won't let yourself feel. But, and as, especially in this pile, it's like your inner child wants you to realize that it's okay for you to be a kid again. It's your destiny to believe in magic, to stand 
in the power of your true heart and to say it is my time and I am here for it and this is how I'm going to be and now I'm seeing Max from the um, where the wild things are where he just he took up his sword and he traveled with dragons and he just knew he knew his worth he knew his power he knew his place and he knew that he could do that because he engaged in it sometimes the beauty of our imagination is that it allows us to see different parts of ourselves that we don't see regularly magic is real even if you don't want to believe in it even if you want to scoff at that don't let yourself be so cynical your inner child, you as a child, I, I can feel it. I can feel it. Knew the truth of magic in this world. And now you're being reminded all the magic that you need is contained within your very essence, within your heart, within your soul. And when you engage in allowing the emotions to flow and allowing yourself to get in touch with your inner child to s raise your sword and climb aboard your dragon and fly to the highest peaks you'll see that you have been free and independent the whole time it's just a matter of perception pile twos i want to say thank you so much Thank you to your inner child. Thank you so much, Rhea, for coming through. Thank you to your guides, to my guides, to spirit, to the universe. But especially thank you to you for being here, for sitting with me, for holding on, and for opening to believing in magic because I can feel it within you. I love you all. If this resonated, please feel free to like the video. Don't forget to hit the subscription button and the notification bell so you don't miss my upcoming videos. And I will see you guys again next time. I love you. Bye. Hello, Pile 3. For your pile, you have the goddess Aphrodite with romantic love. And it's the card 2. But you also chose this Apophyllite stone. And the Apophyllite stone is so great for anxiety and depression. And as I was getting this reading set up for you guys, as soon as I turned over your card, the first thing I heard was, don't you remember? Don't you remember when you were young, when you believed in love when you believed that you were a princess in a tower and your prince would come. Just because you have grown up, just because of the way that the world has changed and the way that we see women and feminism and independence, it does not mean that you should give up on the belief in true blue romantic love in being romanced in getting flowers and chocolates and little gifts here and there and having someone tell you that they love you and Aphrodite and I it's not even really your inner child but it's like your inner teenager is when this it's like when you were a teenager this is when it started shifting something happened whether it be a toxic relationship or um, I'm seeing divorce. Um, one of your parents may have this, and this may be a trigger warning, but one of your parents may have died when you were a teenager. If so, I am so sorry for your loss. I am truly so sorry. But whatever, whatever it was, and it's going to be different for each one of you, you started believing that love love is something that hurts. It's something that brings pain. It's something that 
Hollywood paints one way and the reality is a completely different way. This is my pile of like, oh yeah, sure. Well, show me a Hollywood movie that gives you a love story six year, or six months later or a year later. Show me a love story that actually tells the truth of the challenges in life and divorce and this and that. And that that's fine because you clearly are okay with facing reality of the way that things can be but that doesn't mean that love doesn't exist and that it isn't meant for you it does mean that you need to see your own worth first because you have to believe in it first I also am reminded of a pick a card from Lexi the Leo that I saw a long time ago. I can't remember when it was. But she was talking about a heart chakra clearing and how when your heart chakra starts clearing out from all of the things you get this rush of love and you start wanting to do things like watching romance movies and the funny thing is is I actually was looking through those this morning and like, I don't feel like watching a movie, so why am I looking at these? And I think it was just the energy of your pile coming in early. Like, you guys just really needed to know that it's okay to feel these things. It's okay to trust in love. It's okay to say, this is what I want in love and then expect that to happen. It's just don't attach it and see here you guys have the sun that's so beautiful what a beautiful start and what I said to the other piles is that I'm not the only intention I'm setting for the cards is just to show us a little bit more just to show us a little anything that you guys need to know any messages that need to come forth and you guys are arguably one of my more eager piles and we've got four cards for you guys okay we have the king of swords the four of cups and then we have the nine of cups up here um and actually i do see hang on yep okay sorry guys sometimes Sometimes the cards come out really weird. For me, I've noticed a lot of the times I end up reading them backwards because that's how they speak to me. You, I actually feel this King of Swords energy coming from you. It's, it's as though you don't want to look like the Four of Cups. The Four of Cups to me is one of the saddest cards in the Rider Waite Tarot. I know a lot of people think that it's just this guy who's super, super stubborn. But when I look at that card, it's someone who has worked so hard to build these three cups, to have this joy and these things in their lives, and then they, got, they are lost. They're shattered. They have done everything that they can, and now it's gone. And the universe comes in and says, here, let me give you this because this is what is truly meant for you. But he doesn't even, he can't even bear to look away from the cups from before because the pain of what happened with these three cups is so real and so potent and powerful and it stings so much. And it's, it's like you guys have been through that experience where you don't, it's, it's like you don't even want to look up. You don't want to look up and you don't want to see the sun because if you do, it's going to lead right back to this situation. And this situation almost destroyed you and it turned you very analytical, very methodical, very logical. And love and logic don't always combine. You can't logic your way through loving someone. You just love them. You can't logic your way into why something happened. It happened. 
But when you get stuck in your head and you start getting that harshness without allowing your heart to open up, you bury all of these emotions down, deep, deep down within you. And you absolutely end up not hearing Aphrodite. You, you don't hear your heart. You don't hear the calling of love for you. And you deserve that. You deserve it. You don't believe it, but you do. You absolutely 100% do believe or you not believe, but you do deserve it. And this reading is really calling to you and especially that, that person that you were before it all shattered. She's still or he is still within you still exists within your heart, within your soul, within your being, within your memory. And you can tap into that. And when you do that, what you're going to see and feel is the sun card, which is seriously just the essence of happiness. The nine of cups is the essence of wish fulfillment. Your mind and your heart need to get on board because romantic love is something that is destined to be in your path. It is destined for you, but your anxiety and your depression and your worry and your past experiences are coloring your present experiences so much that you don't see what is already coming or in front of you. For a lot of you, for a lot of you, this feels like you already know this person. You already, you already know you love this person, but you're telling yourself that it's not right, that it, it's not meant to be. And that's because you have had all of this pain in the past that made you stay in your mind and say, you know what, I'm smarter than this because I've been through it. It's like getting in touch with the eight-year-old version of you instead of the 16-year-old version of you. The eight-year-old version who didn't know what the word jaded or cynical was, who didn't know what loss and pain was. So we have pure intention. The fairy of manifestation will help you use your wishes wisely. Manifest your heart's desire with pure intentions for the highest good of all. Hidden depths. Something hidden is about to come to light, perhaps a secret or memory at the back of your mind. When we expose what's hidden, we become free. That's what I was talking about exactly, is this pushing it down deep into the depths, all of that emotion. Some of you may feel like you're having trouble manifesting, but that it's not even so much manifestation. It's like you want someone in your life that has the purest of intentions and you don't see that there is somebody there for you. You don't even think that it's possible that somebody could have pure intentions towards you. And the reason why, and you have been searching for this reason, it is hidden down deep in the depths. You're not going to find it in your heart or in your head. You're going to find it in your heart. Is there one more? I have one more here. I think there's one more. There were just a few that wanted to come out just now. Okay. We have solitude. Think of being alone as meaning you are all one and in total harmony with everything. The greatest treasures are those that wait silently during your quiet times. Number one, there is a difference between alone and solitude. There is a difference between taking a step back and letting yourself be shown what is hidden in the dark and in the quiet and in the depths within you. I. I'm so sorry. I lost my train of thought because it was, I just got pulled to the colors. This is about your personal power, your heart and your third eye is what I'm seeing. It, it 
it's like you've forgotten your own value and your own worth and Aphrodite and your I keep wanting to say your inner child and then I get stopped and it's like nope teen nope teen inner teenager I've never done a reading like this before so I have this like I have teenage daughters and I'm getting a lot of that essence here of like you're not right I'm right you don't know what you're talking about I know what I'm talking about kind of thing and there's that that resistance within you to love to anything that you love and there, you're also I feel this resistance to being alone it's like you're afraid that you're going to be alone but you're also afraid that if you aren't alone then you're going to get hurt and it's this round and round and round and round spiral and I can see a spiral above his head and your head keeps doing this and your heart is saying please stop please come back to yourself please understand that we're here we're with you your guides your angels let yourself be led down into the depths of your heart so that whatever it is that's down there that that one thing that's like a chip that has eroded away at your belief in your heart in love in people's intentions towards you and your worth and your ability to be loved in the way that you deserve to be loved so that can come out it's like let yourself have this sun shine on those hidden depths and when you go through that and you say i just want to know i just want to see i just want to feel i just want to understand those things will come out and they will be brought out in the gentlest way so that you can work through them and believe me i've been through it it does genuinely come out in a very gentle loving way so we have initiation ah uh, Okay. Earth Chalice. There is one more in here. And Peace. Okay. Okay. Initiation is going from one phase to another. It's shifting from one state to another. And the earth chalice, it's about that element of earth, that grounding, that pure nature of all of that. You're being asked to allow yourself to move into a new phase in your life, in the world, to move into a new phase in which you will be grounded into this reality and what you will experience is peace, peace and love. And I know those are platitudes. I know it sounds like I'm being super positive. I know, but because I see this King of Swords, I know that you, it wasn't something small that you went through because you don't put yourself into the King of Swords energy if it's something small to the point that you don't believe that peace exists you don't believe that love exists you will say it but you don't fully believe it within your heart because you don't know what peace feels like and you don't know what love feels like because you don't let yourself open your heart and and like i said i was getting this sense of a heart chakra opening that is an initiation it, it's like your heart chakra and your root chakra and your earth star chakra are all aligning so that you can understand what your purpose in the world is but so you can also understand that you are worthy of love that it is meant for you and that it's time that it's time to accept the fact that you are love and you are loved and you are lovable some of you may consider getting some apophyllite i know that you can find it online. It's a relatively inexpensive stone. 
and I do understand if you can't afford it, something that you can do is you can set an intention to connect with Apophyllite and you can ask your spirit guides to connect you with the energy of the stone because it will help ease that anxiety down and help ease that depression down so that you are able to see into the depths of your being. Let yourself be led down there and trust that it is for your greatest good and trust that it is because it's time for your heart to know love and know peace and know them together without any doubts in your mind. Pile threes, I want to say thank you so much for being here. Thank you to your guides, to Aphrodite, to my guides, to your inner teenager. Are some of you guys real sarcastic? Because that's the energy I keep getting. Um, but I just wanted to say thank you to spirit, to the universe, and especially to you, pile three. Thank you so much. Stay sarcastic, but let yourself feel this resonated please hit the like button and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the little notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos i want to say thank you one more time i love you all i will see you in my next one bye